Hello all sentient beings and welcome to the Transmissions Podcast where we talk all Hasbro, Takara, and third party Transformers! On this episode of Transmissions, we are joined by our good friend John Paul Bove as we get a good look at Masterpiece RC. We also talk about Masterpiece Tigertron and a Studio Series Devastator. Today is Wednesday, February 12th, 2020, and this is episode 368 of Transmissions. Welcome to Transmissions, the podcast that thinks the prices of the new Masterpiece Transformers are too damn high. I'm your host, Charles, a.k.a. Big C, and I'm joined by the excellent Transmissions team. Jeremy, a.k.a. Yakko. Hey, how you doing? And Daryl, the Cybertronian Beast. Hello. Let's talk Transformers. All right, and after a long, long hiatus, we are tickled pink and super pleased to welcome back longtime friend of the show, very early guest host, colorist, artist extraordinaire, Mr. John Paul Bove. Welcome. I just want everyone to know I'm here under duress and not of my own free will. <laughs> Send help. Hello. I'm back. I'll do what I'm obliged to do. God. <laughs> I, I could hear the you in colors. <laughs> I, I did appreciate that. I, I could hear it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> JP, how have you been? It's It's been a while since we caught up. It it has. Yeah. No, I'm doing good. Thank you. Yes. I was, um, the last time I was on your show, I think I was, uh, I was uh, a tiny bit sleep deprived. And um, <laughs> I think most, most of my internal organs have been replaced with dust and pain. Um, so I have, <laughs> I have uh, almost no memories of it, but I'm sure it was great for everyone. Uh, but no, I've been, it's, it's, well, we we changed we changed our recording schedule just for you. So we you did. I you have on. to say, uh, you know, finally, first off, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, and secondly, thank you. Uh, yeah, no, it's, I, I, it's, as uh, as much as I did, did genuinely, uh, and I'm not even being sarcastic though. So I, I very much enjoyed having the long. The long late night sessions, sometimes till six or seven o'clock in the morning, uh, on my side. But I, I think, um, I think I had to just acknowledge that I wasn't quite fit for them anymore. <laughs> um, so bless you for for switching things around for me. We're just really happy to have you back. Uh, I mean, the last time you were here, uh, you you had uh, you know you just had a new baby. Now yep. that baby's in college, so it's been a while <laughs> since uh, you know yep. you've been on, but. <laughs> But you've got some free time now, so that's good. That's right. Yeah, he's actually on. A, it's been so long. He's on a um, a, 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 um, a return trip to Mars at the minute. Um, <laughs> it's uh, twenty thirty five where I am. I don't know what it's like where you are. <laughs> yeah, he's everything's good. He's in bed, so I just had to had to had to put him to sleep before. Uh... No, that sounded bad. Put him to bed before. <laughs> this isn't this isn't a spaying and neutering type conversation today. <laughs> but wow. uh, yes, so that's a callback. I know. <laughs> I'm all about the callbacks, my friend. <laughs> so um, I'll go into detail about the uh, the, the Wikipedia, or the online doctor um, uh, joke <laughs> at some point, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, so he's he's asleep. We actually did pl- have a little play with some transformers that that will come up in the um, trips to the store. Oh, uh, nice! I'm sure later on. Yeah, so. He tends to refer to all of them as just robot or big guy or big robot, <laughs> depending on which ones uh, that he's playing with. But um, it's it's kind of adorable. I, I, he he um, he's quite good. He's quite gentle with them all, which is which is nice. Cool. Yeah, he's doing something right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's a nice backhanded compliment for absolutely, your firstborn yeah. son. But okay, absolutely. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Today he gets to sleep in his bed instead of the cellar, so he's been a good boy. <laughs> well, JP, uh, we're, we're definitely going to catch up and find out uh, what you've been up to, because we know you've got a new comic that was just announced coming out uh, in a couple of months, so uh, we'll probably talk about that in alt mode, uh, so okay. we'll, uh, we'll, we'll save that uh, for a little bit later, okay. but right now we're, we're in the toy show, we're talking about Transformers, so we're going to... We're going to get into that because there's lots of lots of interesting toy news came up this week. So, all right. So first off, as always, we start off the show by thanking our Donatrions, those lovely people who give us money on Patreon and PayPal. So thank you all 
for continuing to support us and helping us keep the show going. If you would like to become a Donatrion, just go to transmissionspodcast.com slash support. And there you'll find links to Patreon and PayPal where you can sign up and, uh, and help us out. You can also help us out by buying some merchandise on our T Public store. And that is at transmissionspodcast.com slash shop. We've got some nice, cool transmissions themed shirt designs. You can also get some Transformer shirt designs. And basically anything from T Public, if you buy it through our link, that will help us out. You can also check out our friend of the show, K Girl, and her store is at tpublic.com slash user slash superstar K. She's an awesome artist who's done lots of work for us and has some awesome designs of her own up there. So take a look and help her out too. And let's not forget the $1,000 uh, donation reward. <laughs> Still no one's gone for yes. it. Yes. Very annoying. <laughs> I'm honest. Yeah, I mean, we we can get you. You can get us and JP to come record a podcast in your living room. All you have to do is donate a thousand for a thousand dollars a month for a yeah. couple of months, uh, yeah. at least. I mean, I w- I will come in person, <laughs> shake the hand, and I do believe as an added incentive, I did say I would bring a ham. I think that was <laughs> that was what was. I don't know about recording a podcast. I'm not I'm not made of time, uh, but I but I might be able to. I, I reckon a glazed ham. I think let's let's kick this a die here. I will I will bring a glazed ham <laughs> between three and six thousand miles to your door. <laughs> a it's an authentic a ham. British hand. Yeah, well, I mean, you know, whatever passes for ham post Brexit, I don't know. It, <laughs> it, it might be a thirty-five rats stitched together, but it'll be glazed, <laughs> and we'll all learn to be grateful for it. Um, so, but anyway, thousand dollars a month. I, I would say six months. Is, is probably fair, because I've got airfares, I have needs. <laughs> I'm just a really terrible habit. <laughs> you know, just make it happen, guys. I'm, you know... <sighs> it's been years now. <laughs> Do people not like ham anymore? I don't even know what the... What, what, what could the barrier be to this $1,000 thing? Do people not want ham? I'm, I'm going to say the $1,000. <laughs> well, that's, that's the obvious answer. <laughs> But what's the underlying reason? Anyway, we, it's, we haven't got, we don't have time to figure out the answers tonight. But maybe they're vegetarian. Ah, then I'll bring a, a glazed yam. <laughs> I can be flexible. It's easier to get a yam in the suitcase, I would have thought, as well. So, anyway, just just putting it out there, guys. I noticed the last, you know, the last few you haven't really mentioned the the thousand dollar level. So, you know, I think a bit of poor marketing might be to blame to be honest i'm not i'm not pointing fingers charles <laughs> that's one of the reasons we had to have you back on because you, uh, you, you yeah. know you keep us on our toes you yeah you push us to be our best yeah mm-hmm. you are your own hype machine <laughs> <laughs> i'm my own only fan <laughs> all right uh we got some toy news so let's uh let's kick it off All right, so we're going to do away with our normal uh, categories for each person, and we're just going to talk about a convention that happened this weekend in, I believe it was China? I, I, actually, Japan. Japan. Sorry, Japan. it's Japan. We talked about this convention for many years, Daryl. I know. I just don't remember. You're the toy guy. <laughs> I don't remember anything. Um Okay, so this is Wonderfest 2020 in Japan, and uh, we've got a bunch of different things to talk about that they announced here. Uh, so first up, we're talking about the Paralyzing Toys and their soft vinyl Jet Ron figure, uh, and this is uh, available at the convention. Uh, it's a it's a PVC figure, very similar to the um, the Super Seven uh, Reaction Master. Uh, figures only these ones uh, don't appear to have any articulation so they're just a, a stand-up kind of soap bottle looking thing hence the name paralyzing i guess he, yeah what, what a bizarre <laughs> hmm, what could we name these i don't know paralyzing yeah job done brilliant I guess this is a thing. I mean, we've seen soap bottle type figures for a while there. Uh, they were a little bigger than this, but uh, yeah, this, this some people seem to like this. I, I, I don't get the appeal myself, but then again, I'm not into everything. So this is just something that's kind of odd, but they seem to be doing the seekers. So we've got ones here that are 
purple. So let's go with Skywarp on this one. It's a very, very light purple, but uh, they've got one in the Starscream colors here shown in package. So it seems like they're just doing well, the... Th- uh, this, is a, this is a recolor of the original Starscream one. Yeah, Skywarp. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's... it's whoa, 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 whoa. It, Are according we to the Skywarp is a recolor? <laughs> <laughs> of, of Starship, because my mind is being blown right now. <laughs> well, wait, 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 wait. Just hold on to your chair here. Okay. Thundercracker. Yes. Is just a blue <laughs> star screen. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> but, so hang on. Blue, you say? Blue. Blue. <laughs> blue. <laughs> blue. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's this one of those. Everything. It's one of those primary colors. <laughs> Oh, and you see, I, and suddenly I realised where I've been going wrong in my career all this time. <laughs> You've been missing one of the three primary colours. <laughs> Anything with blue in, I just refuse to use. <laughs> but I hadn't really. Wow. Okay. Woo. I know. Settle so down. Darryl, the Starscream one was from 2018. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah. And so this is just it's just a recolor of that. a recolor. Okay. And they they say it's a seeker clone. They don't say it's Skywarp. All right. I mean, I, I don't mean, know why, but whatever. He's he's a he's a bit lighter purple than Skywarp. I he guess. Is. And there's no he black. Is. I mean, obviously that's he could be one of the Rainmakers because there was a purple Rainmaker too that was definitely this similar to this shade of purple. Um, so I could I could see maybe that one. Um, I can't or remember. Slipstream. Sli- let's let's not get crazy here, Charles. Let's let <laughs> settle down. <laughs> <laughs> but uh okay <laughs> but, but yeah no it's uh it's just it's it looks like it's just an exclusive for the show uh they're they're paralyzing toys had a booth at uh at wonderfest but yeah so that's kind of neat uh a couple would, other would things you trust a company called paralyzing toys well <laughs> i mean i would i would fear for my life if i picked up one of it that's i would just be like oh, i don't know do i want a paralyzing toy i don't know <laughs> Uh, also at the convention was Sentinel, and they had their uh, how are we going to pronounce this uh, <laughs> n- n- Nendroid n- Nedroid oh, Droid yeah. uh, Nendoroid yeah yes, Nendoroid cl- yeah so these are uh, two new figures in the style of the uh, Bumblebee movie Optimus and Bumblebee and they're kind of chibi style big head little body uh, figures. Oh. Uh, non-transforming but they are <laughs> super deformed cool looking things and they're yeah they're kind of neat i like them they're cute uh the optimus is definitely probably a little bit more uh my style because of the uh, g1 look but the bumblebee is, is still pretty cool um yeah these are kind of fun and neat and i don't uh i don't really see a price on them but uh they're fun if you're into chibi toys these things look uh these things look like they'd be right up your alley that that uh that bumblebee is Josh Paris. I, I think you're right. <laughs> yeah, just with the helmet. Moving on to a couple of the other things that they were kind of featured there. Uh we've got uh an, an another MP ten that uh, I thought this mold would be dead, but I guess they're just gonna keep pumping them out. This is the Atmos MP ten convoy and it's the 2020 version, so they did have uh they've had ones for previous years, and this is a uh um, kind of just a, a green camo uh, version uh, with its uh, hot pink tires. So, I mean, if you're going to go for camo, make sure you got the hot pink tires so that uh, they blend right in. Um, that looks great. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of the, of the, um, the what is it? The nightmare bathing, bathing ape they used to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh Yeah. Yeah, I mean they've done this before with the ba- they're putting it out to go with their shoe line, which is yes. I don't, I don't know, I, I don't know if I mean I guess if you got enough money to to buy Nike sneakers, you can you can throw in an MP10 on there too. I guess I don't mm-hmm. know. Well, it wasn't the last one that they did. Wasn't that the one uh, paired with uh, uh, LeBron James? So I think that's what the last yeah. last year's version. That was all orange, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah, with some brown or something like that. With the with the textile uh, kind of uh, pattern on the top to match a basketball. So I think that's what the the deal is. Was the 2019? But anyway, this is their 2020 version. Um, it's just it's bonkers colors. It's it's yeah. It's 
It's green, green camel with with hot pink. I mean, <laughs> well, I think the pink is actually supposed to be orange. You think so? <laughs> That's what the description says. I mean, still, it doesn't doesn't really fit. It doesn't photograph. No. Well. Anyway, it kind of looks kind of cool. It also is paired in this uh, this story with a series of the Earthrise Seacons, which are mm. they're they're combiner war Seacons, but they're they're finally getting a, a display of their own here. Uh, all all of the Seacons together, and and that looks kind of cool. So if you're you're getting all the Seacons, then uh, take a look at this picture, and you'll be able to see what they're all going to look like together. I think they're they're generation selects. I don't think they're added in the Earthrise toy line. They, they? That's where you get them from. But I think that isn't that the uh, yeah. It's it's the line that they're kind of kind of joined up with is Earthrise, isn't it? Because I mean the the bots themselves are Combiner Wars, right? Cause, mm-hmm. But it's just the line that they're kind of paired with is Earthrise. Anyway, mm-hmm. take a look. Seacons. Uh, a uh, masterpiece uh, Leo Convoy in there as well in their display. So don't really get a lot of good pictures of the Leo Convoy, but he's in there too. Nice Earthrise display and uh, this Atmos MP10. Uh, moving on, we've got a, th- a, dis- uh, a figure from 3.0, formerly 3A, the deluxe sound wave that they showed off at Wonderfest. This is the one that comes with the Ravage, and this is the Bumblebee movie sound wave. So... Uh, very, very uh, faithful to the design from the Bumblebee movie, and uh, it looks pretty sick. Yeah, if you're into this design, this is uh, something you might be interested in for sure. Uh, I believe this is not a statue. It, it, we don't see it in any other poses, but I believe it's an action figure of some kind. It's just super articulated, really high detail, and uh, pretty damn expensive. So, uh Retail, it's expected in Q3 of this year, and for around $250 US, so. And that's just, this is the smaller version. This is their deluxe line, so it looks pretty good, though. All right, but moving into the big news that came out of this show, Wonderfest, uh, is that uh, we got a drop on some new Masterpiece figures, and and that was something I don't think anyone kind of expected. So... um, we got news of MPs 50 and 51 out of this of this show. And 50, we're going back to Beast Wars. We're getting MP Tigatron. So that was pretty cool to see. Um, I know that uh, they're... Who was the last Beast Wars one? Black, or Black Arachnia? So um, yep. looking at, uh, at Tigatron, I don't have Cheetor. The original one was a, was a remold of Cheetor. But... Just me looking at this, I, it looks like it's a uh, a take on the Cheetor one. Just it's it's just bigger, right? Is that what? Yes, yeah, what it looks like. So that that's what the original toy design was. So I, I assume they would keep it that way because the, the the models in the in the show and the toys were basically the same mold. Right. So yeah, the toys the toys were identical and the same size. Um, but uh, but yeah, these ones here are are different sizes, but they do appear to be the exact same mold, um, which is cool. Yeah, that's, that's, that's neat. But, uh, yeah. So taking a look at this, this is MP 50, uh, Tigatron. Uh, it looks pretty cool. Uh, both modes. If you liked Cheetor, I'm going to assume you're going to like Tigatron. Um, John Paul, did you, uh, did you ever get into Beast Wars? I, I adore Beast Wars. Um, uh, yeah, absolutely love Beast Wars. It's my favorite of the cartoons. Wow. And okay. I, You're a man of taste. Yeah. I mean, I you know I'm I'm a I'm a you know a G one er, um, but um, the, the sheer quality of that that show uh, and the writing and everything is just um, uh, off the hook. Um, so oh, wow. I, I've, sadly, I can't. Um, the the costs of some of these um, are are well beyond. Um, sanity, so I probably won't end up getting Tigatron, even though I do want him. So, but but uh, yeah, I think it's a really really good looking good looking. Toy. I'm not a huge Cheetor fan, so I skipped uh, that one. Um, mm-hmm. But I would definitely get this if I could find it uh, for some amount that didn't involve me having to surrender my lymph mm-hmm. to a man in a back alley. Well, I mean. <laughs> 
You got that boy there. I mean, you could. <laughs> oh, yeah. And he's full of lymph. Young yeah. lymph. <laughs> it's Good valuable. Point. Yeah. yeah. Do you so, have the uh, Do you have the original uh, Tigertron? No, I see. Although um, I started out as one of those people um, who was like, "Oh, I refuse to accept the um, uh, change," um, and 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 uh, robots being animals and such. It was I caught Beast Wars by accident uh, on the TV, and the first episode of Beast Wars I ever saw <laughs> was the last episode of season two which is a hell of a place to jump in at, on the, on the <laughs> Ark, the, uh, the, and the, the or Optimus Prime's face being blown up and all that. And suddenly I was like, oh my, what is going on? Because uh, the thing I was worried about was that it wouldn't respect continuity. Mm-hmm. Uh, and actually, I was so overwhelmed by what they did with it. Um, and then I had to re, you know, kind of work my way back. But because I got there quite late, uh, I didn't have a lot of the toys. I bought as many as I could, as I could find in Toys R Us, uh, beyond that point, most of them are were kind of like the season two, all the all the transmetal uh, types. But Tigertron was was long uh, long gone by that point. Mm-hmm. So that's so again, this is quite exciting seeing him look so you know screen accurate. Yeah, um, Jeremy, let's take price out of it because we know uh, as of right now we know that uh, Tigertron is going to be priced at two hundred and twenty dollars US, uh, which is it's uh, it's obscene. Uh, let's. Well, I mean, that's a lot of that's a lot of coin. Yeah, but uh, it's only twenty four thousand yen. <laughs> well, when you put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> but let's go. You know, looking at 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 just the the figure itself, we have has, have established that you're a, you're a Beast Wars fan. Do you see the appeal to this figure? Is this something that that you would want to? the purchase at some point yeah i mean i i definitely see the appeal and tigertron was one of the characters i always liked i'm kind of surprised that the the you said take the price down a bit but i can't um <laughs> i'm surprised that the price being that it does look like it's just kind of an upscaled remolded cheetor you would have thought that there's some price savings there mm-hmm. i i really like this um the the facial molding on the robot mode is fantastic just mm. spot on the colors i think are great the only the only real issue i can see is it looks like the maximal logo is kind of squished vertically in its head okay that's a minor thing but i i think they really they're they're figuring out ways to do the beasts in these masterpiece line that just make it look like they're right out of the show mm-hmm. right on i personally i i mean i didn't know that Tigatron was a, a bigger version of Cheetor on the show. I didn't, I honestly, I have not watched enough of the shows to even, you know, gather that information, but um, I'm glad to see that they've, they've kept that for scale purposes. They are, Ooh. they are honestly trying to go for scale here in the, uh, in the Beast Wars masterpiece line. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy about that. That's, that's nice. It makes my brain at ease, it, you know, yeah. I just looked it up, and Cheetor right now is going for seventy five dollars in BBTS. That's not bad. Hmm. Yeah, so maybe you know the price will drop at some point. Yeah, Charles, what are your thoughts on Tigatron here? <clears throat> in the picture that we were looking at here, just kind of the poster, the the promo poster of him, they seem to have broken his left hand. Uh, you know, or not broken, but it's in a in a weird angle. Mm. Does does that affect your thought? The fact that nobody seems to know how to take pictures of Transformers. Uh, I mean, I, I'm used to it. I'm, I am a trans. I am a long time Transformers fan. So we, we, you know, this is not my first rodeo with poorly transformed uh, uh, official pictures <laughs> at at conventions. But um, I mean, in general, for me, I am not collecting the Beast Wars masterpiece figures uh, just because I, I don't know. I, I feel like. I would be I would be uh more more excited for maybe like uh you know mainline sized Beast Wars figures. I I guess I feel like the masterpiece figures uh they they're nice. They conform to the um to the uh the the models for the you know the computer models from the show. They just uh I don't know. It, it feels like 
you know, they're a little gappy in their beast modes just to, in order to compromise and, and have the articulated robot modes, their beast modes always have a little bit compromise. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, I'm not, I guess I'm not that big of a beast wars fan for the toys to, to really want to collect them. Like I love the show, but uh, the beast wars toys were not like, not my toy jam, I guess. So, um, so I've been kind of staying away from them, but I, I, but I think it's great that they're doing this for beast wars fans and that they're, they're filling out the beast wars lineup. I, I think that's great for, uh, for our younger collectors, the collectors who are, you know, 10 or 15 years younger than us and who were right there in the beast wars uh spotlight Mm -hmm. so that's great cool uh but yeah i mean the price is way too damn high too (laughs) i mean that's a problem too all the all the masterpiece figures are like they seem to be ramping up like having a 50 to 100 percent markup now sent from previous years all right so moving on we did like i said we did get a second uh, masterpiece announcement, and this is MP51, and this is one that uh, I think a lot of people were kind of hoping for, but never really kind of expected for a while. But this is Masterpiece RC, and this is flying right in the face of a bunch of third-party uh, options that are out there right now. And uh, we are uh, uh, finally going to get a um, an official version from Takara. So uh, yeah, we've got one from Fans Toys, we've got one from um, what is it? Uh, Toy World, I think. Um, Mastermind Creations has got one out there. Uh, there's a couple more, I think, but uh, they might be older. Anyway, I mean, RC went from not having an official toy in the '86 line when she came out in the movie to now getting toys almost yearly now, and that's uh, that's really great. So taking a look at. Uh, Masterpiece RC. She kind of popped up online in a, just shown in a in a in a case with uh, with a bunch of other figures. A lot of people thought that maybe within the because it was a, uh, a display showing the '86 movie bots with uh, with Masterpiece Hot Rod, uh, Ultra Magnus uh, herself, and then what people thought was Blur and a Springer. It was then later determined that those were the the normal mainline uh, deluxe figures. Uh, or uh, Voyager Springer, maybe so, um, but that it was RC was the main the main show here, and uh, yeah. So taking a look at RC, there's a, a couple people that have gotten some really good pictures of her online. Uh, the story that we put here has uh, has some of them as well, and uh, so you can take a look at those. But uh, what what we're really looking at here for RC is that is this the the best RC because. I'm looking at it myself, and it's taking a lot of heat online right now because a lot of people think that the transformation kind of sucks. The face sculpt I'm hearing is people don't like the face sculpt. There's a lot of people throwing a lot of shade at this RC. And and personally, my opinion is is that, uh, one, the alt mode is spot on. I haven't seen a third-party option being able to pull off the alt mode as well as Takara has. And two, the the, the robot mode uh, is tough. Uh, the robot mode is tough because it's RC's one of the only ones that really had a, a very human looking face and it's tough to pull that off in toy form. Uh, two, I think it's been dis- decided that it's not transformed properly uh, in the, in the main, like the, the, not the pictures, but the actual bot that's out there right now uh, being shown at the convention. So her, her chest plate is too low. So that's exposing a lot more of the, the white neck piece. So People are saying, oh, it looks like shit. It's, uh, you know, it doesn't, the, the chest plate is too low and, and stuff like that. So let's go around the, the, the table here and get some opinions on RC. Uh, John Paul, what do you, what do you look for when you're, when you're looking at an RC? Yeah, I, I think it's a fine looking toy. Um, so I, I always, um, you know, I, I think um, she's a difficult one to get looking exactly like the, um, the cartoon without some level of, sacrifice and and uh, and change just because you know the the animation model was never meant to turn into that car or stand up so i think it's good you know it's not it's not necessarily my favorite character or uh but i think it's a good um i think it's a good looking version um of it jeremy uh does uh does your house need a pink car sure I don't know if 
if we would be able to afford this version <laughs> with the prices of masterpieces going. But no, I think this is a, a good version. I can see some of the issues with the face. It does kind of look a little bit thinner than the animation models, at least from memory. Mm-hmm. But I think it looks fine. I do wish that they would pay people that actually know how to transform the figures <laughs> for these things. <laughs> Because I, I, I agree with what you said. That, I mean, the chest, you can see that it looks like it should be higher. Yeah. And that it has the mechanism to go a little higher. And the backpack, I, I think, I can't remember where I saw it, but I think it was on Facebook. Someone showed that the backpack actually can be a little bit smaller and hide a lot of that stuff. Hmm. And I think with those two things done, most of your complaints about the, you know, the, the toy are... Much in, in fairness, in that same image, it looks like um, Hot Rod's having a fart. So, <laughs> you know, I, I think we can forgive. And, you know, the other thing as well is, you know, RC, uh, you know, is now, what, 30 years old? Is she 30? 30, 30, yeah, 30. You oh, know, no. yeah, so. 34. 34. I'm just saying, on both men and women, <laughs> things start to head <laughs> south. <laughs> You know, I'm things. I'm definitely wow. You know, parts of me are not keeping where, where they used to be, and um, I just think rather than shaming her, we should just accept that everyone's beautiful in their own way, and uh, accept that that's that's a thing. Just saying, let's let's stop shaming. <laughs> yeah, Ch- Charles, um, <laughs> the <laughs> the price tag on this is. One hundred and forty-three or forty-five dollars U.S. So it's a, a big of a difference from the Tigatron, but uh, still not not insignificant uh, as far as a, as a jump in price. Um, what uh, what do you think of uh, of RC masterpiece RC as as a as a a, a masterpiece figure here? Uh, I generally like RC. Uh, so I mean, I do think. Just because of her animation model, she turns out to be a bit of a shell former anytime someone tries to design her. I, I realize that I'm kind of being hypocritical since, I, I you know, that was my complaint for the Beast Wars figures. But now with RC, it's fine for me. But, you know, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, that, that robot mode, even like JP was saying with the animation model, it, or was it Daryl? It, it was just the robot mode is not made of that, that car yeah (laughs) it's hidden inside the car Mm -hmm. yeah but yeah i mean i I, if i yeah as as uh, jeremy already said the if the the chest and the backpack mistransformations are fixed it probably looks good and the face for me is fine i don't have a problem with the face that looks fine uh she's very beautiful she no no shaming here um thank you charles (laughs) settle down charles the price I, I am the price is throwing me. I mean, she's she's basically the size of a masterpiece Autobot car, and in the past we've had those like as low as sixty dollars. I mean, they've been steadily creeping up, but this is like over double the price of what we typically pay for a masterpiece car, which is a little seems a little exorbitant, but uh, it is. A, I I like the figure. Uh, I just don't like the price, but. I think it's a good figure. I I, I have the masterpiece hot rod, so uh, this would be nice to um, to have. You know, if if they if they continue with doing uh, movie figures, uh, that would be nice to have more masterpiece sized movie figures. Of course, there's there's lots of third party options, but this is an an official Takara option, and I think it looks pretty darn good. Mm-hmm. Right on. So yeah, we'll uh, we'll be monitoring the progress of both of these. I mean, it's. We've still got uh, a lot of uh, I don't know if uh, backlash is the right word, but we're we're still hearing a lot of uh, pretty bad things about Masterpiece Hound. So let's hope that the that has gotten back to the ears of Takara, and they're working on fixing that uh, for these future releases. Um, I know that uh, I believe it was Cheetor had an issue, and then Dinobot had an issue. Uh, Dinobot definitely had an issue. Um, so hopefully those are getting rectified. But uh, yeah, we'll monitor the progress of all of these. Uh, RC looks like it's ready to go, which is odd because it's um, the second uh, of the two. So 
yeah, but yeah, mm. it doesn't look like it's going to be too far along. We generally will see these masterpiece figures in prototype form, and then uh, and then we can follow them along. But these re- most recent ones, all we get to see is, you know, boom, they show up at a show and they're 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 done. It's you know, you know they're going to be out in the shelves, you know, within months and and yeah. So it's it's they've changed their tactics on revealing them, which is interesting. So. So we're going to move on to the last kind of reveal from Wonderfest. And uh, this one here uh, kind of had, a, a, you know, a few of us kind of excited. Uh, this was the full reveal uh, of the toys, not any kind of renders or any kind of CG models or, or whatnot uh, or drawings. This was the full toy reveal of Studio Series Devastator in its full conv- combined form. And you got to see the the next two or the last two components and what they're going to look like. So, um, yeah, this thing here, it, uh, it's massive. It, uh, it looks uh, just like it did in the Revenge of the Fallen movie, which, take it or leave it, if you like it, you know, awesome. If you don't, then awesome. Yeah, it, uh, it looks crazy. It looks awesome. Uh, thoughts on this one, guys? Jeremy? Uh, I mean, it, it looks like the movie how long before we have a third party add on to add some balls to it? Oh, we know that's coming. That's, <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know. I, I've never been a fan of this design, but I mean, I can appreciate the engineering and stuff that they've put into it. I, I do say, I, uh, I can't say I like like the way these are painted, even though it kind of looks like a mess. It does. I mean, I mean, it, it looks like an organized mess. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Okay. So. All right then, John Paul. Uh, what uh, what do you see here when you look at these eight ridiculous <laughs> construction vehicles all all joined together into one monstrosity? Uh, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the of the the um, the Bayverse aesthetic, so this I'm not very excited at all. But I, again, it, 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 it's technically very impressive because of the you know I always feel like. Uh, the average um, uh, Transformers movie design is if you if you took about a thousand coat hangers and threw them on the floor, um, that's roughly what they look like. Um, so to actually make that into a toy uh, and transformable is is a hell of an achievement. But uh, yeah, the only time I've ever enjoyed this was uh, when I was swallowed by him uh, on the Transformers ride uh, in Florida. <laughs> Uh, beyond that, I'm, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of people that we that are very excited for this. Um, it, it's it's not my um, style. I, I kind of like things a little bit kind of cleaner and a little bit less kind of kibbles and bits. Uh, and uh, Charles, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm on the same page as JP. I think my uninterest in this figure has been discussed at length on the show, and I'm still uninterested in it. <laughs> Gonna, um, but yeah, stick with can, some kibbles and bits, huh? <laughs> well, I, I don't eat dog food, but I mean, <laughs> don't you? <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, kudos to all the all the people fans of Revenge of the Fallen out there somewhere <laughs> who get their Devastator figure. I, I hope you enjoy it, but it's not for me. And De- and Daryl, I have to say, because Daryl's collecting them too. <laughs> I am. I'm. I'm not a huge fan of the. Uh, the 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 movie de- design but i i for some reason i just feel like i need to collect this uh this ridiculous <laughs> combiner so uh we're gonna move on to that last story aforementioned last story by charles and uh it's just a uh a kind of a wrap up to uh the wonder fest and uh i'm gonna let charles take it because i have not read it <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs> uh so this is this is uh we've these links are coming from TFW 2005. So actually one of their uh, mods was at the show and they were able to actually uh, talk to some Takara Tommy rep- representatives there. So this is a just a summary of some of the questions they asked and they got some information. So uh, first up, uh, the remember the Armada Optimus Prime mold? We saw that, I believe it was last year. Uh, and we were wondering when that was coming, if that was going to be part of the War for Cybertron siege line or something else. And 
apparently Takara Tomi has not decided what they're going to do with it. They're, they are just, they are considering putting it in Masterpiece, Generations, or another line. Uh, so it hasn't been canceled, but uh, it's not coming out yet. It hasn't gone out of the, mm. the prototype phase yet. So uh, that's interesting. Yeah. Next, uh, uh, and you mentioned this, Daryl, there were some quality control issues with Masterpiece Hound. And so he actually asked the Takara Tomi people about that, and their response was that uh, in uh, different materials were used in Vietnam, uh, and they were un- unaware how that would uh, how that would pan out for Hound. Uh, so they so this is uh, they know of the the issues. There are some breakages with the masterpiece Hound figure. Uh, but they haven't decided if they're going to do a re-release uh, or if they're going to change the factories or materials uh, for producing Masterpiece Hound. So, but the people that bought the, it already, they're screwed. Uh, I mean, that, that's what it sounds like. It, it doesn't sound like we're offering a refund and or replacement of figures or anything like that. There was there there's no talk of that. Wow. Uh, so, I don't know. I haven't really dug into the the masterpiece hound stuff. So has it been significant? A lot of people have gotten like broken figures. What's yeah, been the issue? There's it seems to be like there's a couple different spots on the figure where it breaks. Um, one more than others. There's a door on the back of the vehicle, like a kind of like a I don't know a gate, like a tailgate or something like that, and it seems to mm-hmm. break there pretty easily. But uh, yeah, there's a couple different breakage spots and and. A lot of people seem to be posting about it it breaking on them or stress marks at the very least. So, yeah, it's, they're not people aren't happy, and it's breaking out of the box. I mean, we have one right in our in our own Discord server of of somebody trying to uh, to move it. It's uh, you know they're offering it for you know to to sell, and they just say yeah it it broke right out of the box. I never even got to transform it, but if you want to take it off my hands, then that's uh, you know uh, I'd appreciate it. So. Yeah, so I mean that's just it's kind of ridiculous. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Well, uh those people are out of luck it looks like. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's unfortunate. All right, uh, and the last uh bit of news and this is something we've already been talking about on the show is the constant price inc- uh, increases of the masterpiece figures. And the Takara Tomi booth director says that fans have been overly demanding cartoon aesthetic. And so in order to pull off the cartoon aesthetic while maintaining a proper alt mode, the number of parts for each figure has gone up compared to the Masterpiece Dotsons or Wheeljack. Uh, and those are the ones I mentioned that were, you know, at the much cheaper price point. Mm-hmm. Uh, the cost of materials has also gone up uh, and that contributes to the rising price as well. So if we go back to the old way, they'll, uh, they'll lower the price? <laughs> I, you know what? Somehow, when you're dealing with a giant mega corporation, somehow the products never seem to go down in price, regardless of of external factors. It seems like things only push the prices up, never down. I don't mm-hmm. I don't know. That's weird. Ne- that weird. Never seems to happen. <laughs> yeah. So so they didn't really have an answer for that. I mean the the TFW 2005 uh, representative, uh, his name is Game Game Lingual. He uh, or or uh, I, I, I feel like that's wrong. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to judge. I, I feel like you've probably said that wrong, but God bless you for trying. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, gamer lingual. I don't. I, that. That's. I don't know. I've no idea either. I'm just pleased it's you saying it and not me. Because I can judge they... you now easily and pretend that I could have got it right first time. It's, it's like I'm on the internet. <laughs> But yeah, they 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 basically gave some feedback that uh, many fans feel like they'll they're not going to stick with the masterpiece line or the hoppy in general if the prices keep going up. So, and the 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 corporate representative was like, "Well, we'll take that feedback back to our corporate executives, and hopefully they'll be aware of that." So yeah, um, spoiler alert: prices will never go down. <laughs> I don't think yeah. I don't think that's ever going to happen. <laughs> You know, I, I I appreciate I appreciate this fellow fan for going out and actually communicating yeah. that to the Takara Tomi guys. Uh, but yeah, well, I'm it glad is what he, it is. Uh, I'm glad he emailed that those that those answers in because he's never been seen again. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, yeah, I mean, so that's a, a little bit. I mean, I, I imagine the representatives at the Dakar Tommy booth are probably low on the totem pole of Dakar Tommy. So you're not you're not getting the CEO working the booth so that can give you some straightforward answers. And even if it was a CEO, they wouldn't give you straightforward answers. So, yeah, that's that's basically all the all the hmm. info we have here. Shit. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> It is a show. I mean, I, I think you look at the, um, the the thing I will say is that, that because trying to get them looking like a, an accurate vehicle in one mode and the accurate cartoon model, which often bore no relation to one another, you know, is, is does border on magic, you know, in terms of how it pieces together and the, you know, to try and get even things like Optimus Prime's chest, you know, looking right, there's actually a hidden chest underneath the cab and all those sorts of just incredible kind of tricks that are done to make those things happen i can see i can see why it is expensive it's but it's you know it, but it is really expensive there's no there's magic no so cheap no i mean it, it well exactly yes um but yeah it's it's tricky because it's it's kind of it is you know i would have there would have been a time i would have bought most of them and now it's kind of like mm, I, I'm having to pick and choose, yeah. like you know, um, the the cartoon accurate. I'm not sure which MP it is. Uh, Optimus Prime is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. You know, I love my MP10, but I definitely would love that Optimus as well. But I just, I can't, I can't make those those numbers work. There's lots of things I can't afford uh, in life, and um, <laughs> you, you know, everyone's on a budget ultimately, and you have to make decisions with these things. But you know, if if it were if they were closer to where they were, I mean, I think when the first M- MP1 came out over here, it was £50, pounds, um, which, um, you know, is a currency that probably will become meaningless in about a year's time. Um, <laughs> it's approximately two amulets full of cat's teeth in new Brexit money. <laughs> but, um, you know, that was a big figure with metal and and what have you, and then uh, that was £50, and then when Soundwave came out, he was obviously much smaller, but he had the tapes, and he was 100 and, 125 I think, something like that. Um, you know, and it's just sort of, it, it just sort of keeps going in that uh, that direction, and um, yeah, it does, it does, it's a struggle. It is, and I, I'm pleased someone mentioned it, but I'm also pleased that they sort of explained why, because you know, I don't think any anyone is trying to fleece anyone. But similarly, you know, a lot of people cannot afford to buy for the prices they're going for. So, I wish I'd bought about eleven masterpiece Grimlocks when I had the chance, because uh, they were what sixty? Was it sixty? Mm-hmm. I think was it eighty pounds. Was it eight? Uh, 80, sixty yeah, pounds, so eighty bucks. Eighty bucks. That sounds pounds, about right. Probably. Yeah, uh, and I remember thinking, I wish I'd bought two. I wish I'd bought because the both modes are so brilliant on those. Uh, I would have loved to have had two, um, but yeah, I mean now Grimlock would probably be what two hundred and fifty dollars probably if he came out again. I mean, they're they're inevitably going to do another Grimlock. Of course they will. They'll transform yeah. exactly I'm still the waiting same. For the other Dinobots, I would you know the just crying out for a for a, a masterpiece set of Dinobots. I, I would definitely I'd probably have to just bite the bullet on on those. The certain ones I would I'm just stupid. And would uh, cough out for. <laughs> well, that's it for toy news. Uh, Charles, back to you. All right. Well, uh, let's move on to trips to the store. This is where we show off all the awesome Transformers merchandise we got this week. We do this as a video that you can watch on YouTube and you can see everything we got in beautiful high definition. We'll also have the audio right here in the podcast that you can continue to listen uh, as we uh, put it right here. But please go to our YouTube channel and watch the video and see all our purchases in high definition and beautiful extra color. So without further ado, trips to the store. The Transmissions Podcast will return after these messages. All right, uh, let's start off and show off the stuff we got Jeremy, you're up first. All right. Um, I got a comic book, and that's about it. <laughs> Just uh, Transformers number 16. <laughs> got the A cover. This is the one that we last reviewed, I don't know, months ago, whenever it came out. 
So <laughs> only two weeks ago. <laughs> looking forward to to reviewing seventeen next week. Haven't read that yet, even though we know it's coming out because we got the review copy. That's all I got. All right. I'll it's gonna go be, t- next, it's gonna be tough uh, to beat that, Charles. <laughs> I know. Do what you can. I, have, oh, yeah, I haven't been I, on for I, two years. I've got I've got about eighty five thousand things to show. So <laughs> <laughs> upgrade your hard drive, kids. All right, I, I can't possibly compete with JP, but I, I, I've I didn't get anything this week, unfortunately. But I do have some stuff from uh, from way back in TFCon Toronto last year. Uh, here are some uh, some of the postcards I got from uh, Josh Perez. So this is a um, it's a two page postcard spread of beast wars uh optimus primal and megatron nice. it's a nice little uh cool graphic and then i've also got a two-page spread of snarl and daniel in his exosuit which is an odd juxtaposition but there it is it looks cool i wager it's based on the guests that were at tf oh uh, probably <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense that makes a lot of sense <laughs> Yeah, so that would be, uh, what was it, David Mendenhall and uh, Hal Rail, I think. Hal Rail, voice of Snarl, David Mendenhall, voice of Daniel, I think. Maybe. You're, you're the Check one with the, the uh, encyclopedia in the brain. And uh, also some oldie but goodies is a Bumblebee in kind of an animated style, and then Ultra Magnus fighting Cyclonus. They're not, this is not a two-page spread, they're just separate postcards. There they are. Touch them together. If they if they did go together, it would be a bit okay. weird that Bumblebee's just sat there gurning like an idiot whilst <laughs> Ultra Magnus fights for his life just just behind his shoulder. I just smiling yep. over here. Smile for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> Bumblebee behind you, huh? Uh, behind you, Bumblebee. <laughs> what? Behind you. I also, uh, at a parts party at TFCon Toronto, I picked up uh, some little pewter figures. They're not pewter. They're just soft plastic, but they look kind of pewter. It's an Optimus Prime and a Jazz. They're, they're little uh, figures. They, they come apart. They're little pieces, little cool little figures. They've got little stands, too, that they're on. So I think they look cool. Uh, yeah, I got them cheap at a parts party in somebody's hotel room. So a I like A parts them. party. <laughs> What else hmm. did you get in that room? Interesting. Well, you you were there, Daryl. <laughs> Whatever you picked up, you, it's gone by <laughs> Broad spectrum you antibiotics. All right, I'm going to throw it over to our guest, JP. Uh, I, I think he's got some things that will put us all to shame this week. So go ahead. <laughs> I thought you were going to say to sleep then. He's got some things that put us all to sleep. Uh, well, Because it's been a while, I, um, I'm going to get the the big guy out of the way first so oh and one of his wings has fallen off the one i so carefully put on before we start so i'm just going to put it here so you can't see <laughs> <laughs> so this is a transformer i believe there's a uh, a television series or books that this is comes from and uh, i'm a huge uh, base former uh, guy not literally, he is. I'm so excited that this is a. It weighs about four human beings in weight. It's and also it's just really big. Like I, when I, as a kid, I imagined uh, uh, Omega Supreme being big, and then when I finally got him, and he's this little tiny thing, and the rocket's like this big. But I like the way the, the cunning way in which this comes apart, and the rocket's really, you know, is a very long rocket. <laughs> 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 and what have you and I love all this I love all the, the this shenanigans this fire you know I love that I think it's a great gimmick <laughs> and yeah I'm just really happy I'm really happy with um, the fact they're doing Scorponok and um, uh, and what have you as well I just if I can have a huge city made of Transformers I'll be very very happy so you're probably happy that the Earthrise is also bringing back those little MicroMaster bases yes yeah well what's nice is because um, I, 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 I because as a kid sorry just put that down as a kid, I, I didn't really have, we didn't have very much. I wasn't, we didn't at all. And so, MicroMasters was a, was a line I had quite a few of because they're tiny and cheap. Um, and as a result, I've, I've, a lot of them I'm quite fond of. So I'm quite pleased to see those uh, kind of coming um, coming out. Um, so the other ones I got was just I got these a while ago, but just because they all appeared in this hit artistic comic based journal <laughs> magazine. Uh, Transformers 84 
heard about that. And I used this for reference quite a lot. My my uh, the, so so I was using these guys as my as my reference for that. So I always get quite excited when I when I can actually buy uh, or I already own the toy of something of a character that features in the book because uh, they they feel for, like... for the listeners say say their names. Oh, so that I will. Do, I'm sorry. Who are I forget that we're p- people at home are. So this is uh, punch slash. Counterpunch, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then we've got um, uh, Fast Lane and Cloud Raker, or Cloud Raker Fast. I know which one's which. Of course, I do. I'm a fan, um, <laughs> but they look very similar, don't they? Um, so again, I use these guys quite a lot for um, uh, for reference as well as the uh, originals. And then the only other bits and because piece... you did color Transformers eighty four number zero. Did I? My name's on the book. It's not always a good sign of whether I did or didn't work on it. <laughs> Uh, but yes, uh, so I did, and they're in there, um, so that was nice. And then um, uh, just recently, the old this was very hard to get over here because it's an exclusive to Walgreens. Uh, we don't have that here, <laughs> so that was good. But I do like myself a, a ratchet, um, not slang for anything. There you go. <laughs> so he's he's a darling. I'm pleased to have him. And then I just I picked up this dude uh, just last week. So that's sorry, uh, Spinister. Uh, from, nice. Um, so he's he's nice. I don't know why I, I really like this color of it, a magenta. It's 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 a very vibrant color anyway. But um, and and the purples and the blues, which I think is the same reason I really like the sea cons. Um, but even though there are, you know, they're not quite as nightmarish on the eye as um, Victorian. Um, those two colors are designed for epilepsy. But um, I just yeah, like that I think one. Daryl was uh, singing the praise of Spinister when he got them. Spinister, Spinister won our our contest or our contest our survey for best uh, deluxe figure oh. from last year. So, so what was, and it's a fabulous just, figure. I love I it. Know, but just look at that face. Mm-hmm. It's brilliant. I lo- absolutely love that. And that's another one. So a lot of the um, uh, the figures that are coming out at the minute are ones I never saw in the shops, never owned as a kid, um, and largely they appeared in comics, um, and they looked like this in the comics, whereas the toys didn't um <laughs> so it's for me it's like proper wish uh, you know childhood wish fulfillment to um to for that and then the one other thing i was just gonna because uh, i realize i've had this i really haven't made enough of a fuss about this book um jim sorensen's a visual history transformers um which is just delightful um if you don't own it then don't talk to me just don't yeah, I think um, there's a few pages on regeneration one in there. There is, yes. There's there's a few in there, but um, uh, yeah, there's lots and lots of stuff from all over the the, the Transformers uh, uh, landscape, and it's just beautiful. It's a it's a gorgeous book, um, and um, yeah, that's. I think that's everything. So there we are. I managed to whittle down eighty five thousand down to six. So there you go. Over to you. I think you still got us beat. <laughs> So you probably had all these on in the last few weeks, I just or, or months. But um, for me, this is an exciting, thrilling yeah. return to to the fold. So you know, I get to show off stuff. Normally, every time I've been on before, I've had to grab something that I've owned for about eight years and go look. <laughs> nice. Thanks. Your approval means everything all right. to me, Charles. I just want you to know. <laughs> <laughs> really does. Now it does. Huh? It does. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Daryl, uh, wrap it up and show us what you got this week. hey oh. Well, uh, I'm going to start off with a comic as well. This is Transformers 16, the other cover um, that uh, we, we got. Uh, I can't remember who did this. Uh, Lo- the Lauren. Uh, that is, that is uh, Hal Laren, who is uh, yeah. a friend of mine. He's a UK-based artist, so he does a lot of um, CG uh, stuff. So I don't know if he's hand-drawn this or... Or part rendered part, but yeah, he's we've worked together on a few bits and pieces, just small press stuff over here, mm. and over like ten years ago, collaborated on a few bits and pieces. He's a really, really good guy, really good guy. UK right. based, huh? Yeah, don't hold that against. Like- <laughs> <laughs> don't don't rip anything up just because it's the UK. We've already done that to ourselves. <laughs> Daryl prefers his artists to be Canadian. This makes good m- mulch. <laughs> Absolutely. Can I get your mulch in there? <laughs> but I do have a couple toys that I've been picking up. So uh, these are uh, some action masters that uh, that I've g- gathered. Uh, this is Snarl, action master Snarl. 
uh, paralyzed doesn't, still. Doesn't transform into anything, but he has a little little dude, little partner guy, Tyranitron, I think his name I, is. I think it, I think his name's Ian. <laughs> Ian, it's called. It's tiny little Sir dude. Ian? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, come along, the style. <laughs> <laughs> There's it's not a lot to these guys, but uh, they're they're transformers. So yeah. Um, also, so I got so much wasted uh, plastic snow. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the last one here is uh, this is jackpot. A. It's a, a remold or a recolor of the jazz one, I think. And uh, I don't remember what his uh, little partner guy is, but uh, it's right it's, here. It's, it's some kind of it's bird. It's Barbara. That one. <laughs> <laughs> So they're they're fun, um, yeah. They're neat. Uh, I've been trying to get a couple of the vehicles just so that these loose loose guys I can put in, just to have them so that they're not dinking around. A couple of the legs are really loose. Uh, these ones are aren't that bad, but uh, yeah, Snarls is actually he's pretty tight. So yeah, whatever. They're fun. They're they're part of Transformers. So I guess if I'm gonna have a collection of G ones, I gotta get the Action Masters too, right? So yeah. I'm almost at 300 figures, which is kind of wow. crazy. 300 G1s. Wow. Oh, wow. So, yeah. It's getting a little ridiculous. I'm getting into the, the weeds here on the <laughs> on the <laughs> G1 figures. It's like, that's G1? All right. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you, you're, you're, not, you're not obligated to buy all the G1s, Daryl. Uh, just just let you I know. Am. <laughs> I am. I am. If, you're, okay. if, if you get to this point... <laughs> you, you're past the point of no return, Charles. You just have to finish it off. Okay. So, anyway, that's what I did this week. Um, there's a lot of other crazy crap around here. Um, I think it's right here on the wall is my copy of Unearth, uh, signed by uh, oh. some some gentleman. Um, oh, I can see. It. I, I, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's up there. It's behind. It's behind my boxed prowl. So again, not yeah. a slang for anything. <laughs> nope. But, uh, <laughs> so yeah, it's in. You'll sh- happy to know it's in a place of prominence in the house. Thank you. Where I can't see it. Yeah. <laughs> His wife made a move it from the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But that's it. That's what I got this week. We now return to the Transmissions Podcast. All right, we're back from our trips to the store, and let's move on to convention news. All right, a um, couple things in convention news. First thing is that CybeFest 2020 has been announced. This will be August 1st at the Kent Commons Community Center in Kent, Washington. And um, it's their seventh annual convention. No other information has been announced, but... Uh, this is just a, a, a one-day convention that I think um, our, our friend Mike Seibert has been to many times. We're trying to get Yoshi to go since it's practically in his backyard, but who knows. Anyway, um, that is going to be happening. Can't get him to come on the show anymore, so we <laughs> yeah. can't get him to leave his, <laughs> leave his house. Yeah, so um, we'll have more news once they announce more information. I think the the Sidefest guys reached out reached out to us on our Discord, so we might be able to get them back on the show to to talk about this year's convention too. Cool, yeah, that'll be fun. Uh, TFCon Orlando has announced that Aaron Archer is going to be attending. Uh, he was basically the head of Transformers for a number of years at Hasbro, and um, in addition to panels and signings and stuff, he's going to be doing a special ticketed workshop. That is uh, on the Sunday of the convention. It's going to be about two hours. It's going to cost $20 plus a $2.85 fee. And it's going to be basically talking about the development process for the for a fictional franchise toy line. And it's kind of, he's been doing this for a number of years, and this looks like he's been iterating on it. And it's going to be more interactive than the one I went to a few years ago. But... I would encourage people go to it. Uh, you don't really need to have any art skill or anything. If you're just interested in like building storylines, um, uh, just any, if you're interested in the creative process at all, I think it's, you can learn something from it. So I would recommend it. And, uh, that is it for, uh, convention news. 
All right, let's finish up the show with some feedback. All right, uh, we've got a, a couple of notes uh, from uh, recent episodes we did. So we had the extra episode 48, uh, Daryl's interview with Epic, uh, one of the newer Transformers fans and uh, models out. And this feedback comes from Atticus. And they say, uh, commenting midway through the podcast, I love that she name dropped Thu and Jobby, two of my other fave toy reviewers. I started following her when I saw she had a really cool sound wave tattoo. And thanks to this podcast, learned she has toy reviews. Nice. That's true. She does have toy reviews. And they're fun. Yes. They're very fun. <laughs> they are linked on the episode show notes and uh, NSFW. That's all I'll say. Not safe for work. She does them topless. <laughs> that's why they're NSFW. <laughs> Charles doesn't say it like saying the word. <laughs> it makes him blush. Yeah. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> All right. Uh, we have another uh, bit of feedback from episode 366. That was when we had the folks from uh, Toy Robot Magazine on, and their Kickstarter is live. We mentioned that last week. Uh, this comment comes from Harry Prime. He says, this was a great interview. Really enjoyed it. This was the first I heard about a printed magazine coming out for Transformers, and I'm very interested in it. Thanks, Transmissions Podcast team. You're welcome. Uh, so I do want to give credit to Daryl there because he did basically reach out and organize and set up the interview. So kudos to you, Daryl, and uh, thanks for yeah, no getting yeah, all the work done there. Yeah. Yep. The Kickstarter is live currently. It is uh, currently going uh, there looking uh to fund i believe they had mentioned in another interview that i listened to that they're looking to fund the first six magazines so it's the first year's worth of product um so their their goal is a little high they're looking for yeah hundred and twenty five thousand dollars for um you know it's 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 for six magazines but it's also to pay the people that are doing the work so they're it's a team of four people that are going to dedicate themselves to this magazine. So, um, yeah, it's a little it's a little high, but then when you kind of factor in what's uh, what they're actually trying to do, then four people's salaries for a year is that's not really that much. But uh, I guess we'll we'll see. And yeah, yeah we'll uh, we put the link. Uh, well, uh, I, maybe we'll put the link in the show notes again. So if people are uh, are curious, as of right now. Uh, they're, they've still got a ways to go. They're at $4,257 at the time of this recording. So, um, yeah, they've got their work cut out for them. Mm -hmm. So we, w we wish them well. All right, uh, that'll do it for this week's feedback. And uh, thank you again to John Paul Bove for coming on the show. Hey, anytime. And uh, – you will definitely hear JP on alt mode this week as well. So uh, stay tuned for that in just a couple of days. That'll do it for this episode of Transmissions. Oh, JP, uh, you know, you're online. You you you, ha you use the Internet. Do you want to like anything you want to plug or, uh, or, you know, give your social media links or stuff? What do you, uh, you want to yep. tell the people? So, OK, first of all, uh, I'm here against my will. Please don't help. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so I'm on uh, Twitter as at Wordmonger. Um, it's like a, a wordmonger, but with an extra ER on the end. In terms of stuff, uh, there's a few things coming out. Obviously, there's Transformers uh, 84 um, series coming out, mini-series. Uh, there's also the uh, Dawn of the Predacus is finally coming out um, for general release sometime soon. I think that's this week. Is it this actually? week? Uh, it's the hundred the hundred page Predacon special thing. Yes, com yeah. So it's in there with um, uh, Spotlight Jazz and uh, some other bits and pieces as well. There's also a book that I've worked on with my wife, which I'm just going to look up exactly what it's called. Um, I believe it is called Agent Moose, uh, which is a children's book, um, which is incredibly fun uh, that she's drawn uh, and I've coloured. Let me just check. That's what it's called. Agent Moose. Uh, I have posted links to it on. Um, yes, it is. It's called Agent Moose, um, and that's out uh, sometime later this year, I believe. Just I would think, as a Canadian, August the fourth. 
Uh, August the 4th, uh, it's coming out in the UK anyway. I imagine it's about the same in the US uh, and beyond. Um, so that's been a lot of fun. There's a series of those uh, um, should be coming out, which I've, I've um, uh, worked on. And beyond that, I've been... Uh, uh, readers in the UK that read Empire Magazine, which is a, a film magazine, um, I've been doing some illustrations for that. And that's about it, really. I'm on Facebook uh, under my own name. Uh, I'm on Instagram as Wordmonger, but I'm almost never there. But feel free to follow someone who you'll never see anything from um, if you want. <laughs> Beyond that, I'll give out my full home address and telephone number in a minute, and people can just <laughs> fight, come and just, just turn up. All right. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll take you up on that. <laughs> yeah. It'll be in the show notes. <laughs> All right, uh, JP, if you could provide us a link to that uh, that book, we'll put that in the show notes of course. as well. Yeah, we'll do. All right, uh, that'll do it for this week's Transmissions. Thanks, everyone, for listening, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. Later. Hey, everyone. Thanks for listening to this episode of Transmissions. But just because this episode is over doesn't mean the Transformers fun has to stop. Join us and other Transformers fans on our Discord chat server by visiting transmissionspodcast.com slash Discord. If you would like to learn more about how you could support the Transmissions Podcast, just visit transmissionspodcast.com slash support. Thank you all for listening, and we'll see you again next week. Be plenty uh, filled, I would say. How okay. dare you? Um, <laughs> thanks for editing the intro just as about as I'm about to say it. <laughs> That's well, helpful. it didn't make any sense. <laughs> I've no idea what anyone was anyone was saying, but uh, I just want to say I agree. <laughs> uh, I thought that third point was very well made. Um, I prefer the yellow. <laughs> <laughs> and um seven <laughs> i'm just gonna hope that was the right answer to anything that was said is that so that's your final opinion on uh, on masterpiece rc seven okay yes out of a scale i'm not prepared to <laughs> to pin myself down to charles it's good to see you not wearing a t-shirt that can be confused for nazi paraphernalia that's always good <laughs> <laughs> Especially in 2020. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Everything the U.S. has, but not all the yeah. shit. With more maple syrup. I'm, uh, no, I've been all over many a man's <laughs> chest. I'm sorry I had to say it. It just... <laughs> I had to do it whilst he was drinking as well, just in case. But sadly, it didn't quite, my timing was slightly off. This week, we have a special guest on the podcast, Mr. John Paul Bove. How are you, sir? Not that it's any of your business, Charles, but I'm actually doing pretty well. <laughs> okay, next time I won't ask. It's fine. <laughs> it's very personal. You just ask these questions and I'm just not ready for them. <laughs>